I have a great addiction to uh, plants and flowers, and so you'll find that uh, a good many of my paintings, perhaps most of them, are on that subject. I love poetry. I love what what poetry suggests to me in the way of music, and uh, I think that's is my first love. I always, the very first thing I ever wrote was a song. When I was ten years old, I wrote a song. <laughs> He's more like a European than an American, although he was born here. Uh, his older brothers and sisters were born in Europe, and he was born here. His music, his playing is the work of, of somebody whose roots are very much in Austria. Also his painting. He's a composer, first of all, which is probably his innermost interest. And then, of course, he was acknowledged as the greatest accompanist uh, come along before we started uh, playing two piano concerts. Seniors Doherty and Adolf Rutzika, the duo piano team, performed six world premieres by Berg, Hindemith, Rieti, Schoenberg, and two by Stravinsky. When we uh, play, we don't say, now, we're, we're going to do it this way. We're, we have to follow this pattern. We've just, we have, you come here and I come there. We, we don't plan it. We, don't, we have a general idea how we're going to play, but we're, when we get out to the other day, we're free. And we, we play the way we want. And we can adjust, we know each other so well, we can adjust to each other all the time. And we never play exactly the same. I think that uh, characteristic grows with all with our playing with his with his painting with my writing For just the, the pleasure of playing together, we started to play two piano things, and then uh, we made, I don't know how we first made a career of it. I don't know what, what impelled us the first two. We got, two. we were so crazy about the Stravinsky concerto. That's right. That was really what <laughs> set us off. We were interested in modern music. Today, of course, it's just an accepted thing, but in those days, that, that was very revolutionary music. There was a, uh, a time there in the 30s and 40s when a lot of two piano music was written by uh, great composers. By great composers. There was an interest at that period, apparently, in in, in the two pianos. There were a number of two piano teams. Composers turned out a lot of music just then. We studied piano at the Juilliard and knew the li piano literature and thought we had something to say with it. And we uh, emulated our teachers, the Levines, who were great pianists and also great duo pianists. And they stimulated us into playing two piano concerts, which we did with great success.
Dorothy and Ritsika duo give superb performance. They played with such precision and spirit that they received an ovation, a rare thing heard at a duo piano recital, and following a work of such modernity. For me, of course, the effect of their skill and precision was electric. To be part of an audience so moved was an unforgettable experience. We were greatly influenced by Toscanini, the great, the great conductor. I mean, there was nothing like that ever. We were terribly under his spell. And we, and one of his great attributes was, was this terrific life that he had, terrific feverish thing that came across. That great verve that he had was, we, we, we feel, we feel that we want to put into music. We had separate careers at first. I was the head of the piano department of the University of Texas. Uh, so I came to New York with an established career as a solo pianist. And uh, Celius, of course, had a, a great reputation as a accompanist and played for all the great singers. My early days in Minnesota were filled with music. Everyone practiced or played some instrument. I played the piano, of course, and accompanied my mother at a very early age. I think I was 10, maybe, when I first accompanied her in public. But I learned to love the voice at, from that moment and to love the art of accompanying and that of course, has developed through my whole career. When I went to New York to study further, I accompanied all the metropolitan singers. I had access through friends to the Met uh, opera and knew many of the great singers the, of that day. <laughs> He was greatly uh, attracted to the singers he played for. He played for all the great singers, like this Eva Gauthier was a great influence in his life and Pauvre Friche. She had a very great interpretive ability. She influenced me in the writing of dramatic stuff, a song like The Kay, for instance. The Kay is a beautiful poem taken from a collection of ancient Chinese poetry translated by the English scholar Helen Waddell. I was attracted to it in the first place because of its tragic story, the story of a woman's first love and her betrayal, but also by the quality of extraordinary understatement by which the tragic story is told. The phrases, each phrase of the story is told with the utmost simplicity and without any comment, as if the woman no longer had any feelings. I chose a simple folk-like theme to indicate the something of the 
oriental character of the poem, but also to tell it, express it also in my own way. People always ask, how come you're a musician and you're interested in painting? I inherited my interest and whatever ability I have in, in both arts from my father, who uh, was very musical, and also he was a very good draftsman. I'm not stimulated by music. And in my painting at all. <clears throat> I'm uh, stimulated by the medium, principally. And although I painted many uh, still lifes of flowers, I rarely use a flower to, as a starting point. Uh, I do it from my emotional reaction to, to flower.
I'm stimulated, certainly, by flowers because I've, I've always loved them. I remember it as a boy when I was a very little chap, maybe five years old. I loved flowers passionately. And we had a beautiful park. This was in Chicago, Lincoln Park. And I couldn't resist picking them. Of course, my mother forbade me and didn't know about it. But I'd pick these flowers and stick them in my waist blouse. <laughs> and one day, a policeman saw what I was doing and confronted me. I was just a, not more than five years old. And of course, he just scared the hell out of me. <laughs> and he made me take all those flowers and throw them away. I hadn't thought of it until this minute. There must have been something there that finally did flower into my paintings. And uh, I still have the passion for flowers, and of course we raise a great many here. While I was accompanying and doing two piano concerts, all of this time I was still composing. And I think that was one of the chief reasons that I gave up accompanying. And when our two piano concerts came along, I could do more writing. I wrote a sonata for two pianos that we played, many of them published. I, of course, had a great number of the English poets whom I loved. They were, they were my first love. You know, Shelley, Hardy, Browning. But uh, later on, I've gone to the American scene, and uh, I was introduced to them by a book of poems that my family made available to me when I was very young and which I've lived with ever since. The dragonfly hangs like a blue thread loosened from the sky. So this winged hour is dropped to us from above. Oh, clasp we to our hearts this close companioned, inarticulate hour when twofold silence was the song of love. I was particularly attracted to this poem of Rossetti's because of its resemblance to a scene in my early childhood that stays with me, a scene of absolute quiet that country used to have. Uh, uh, Rossetti describes the English scene with words like peace and stillness and silence even and quiet. All these words that are not very easy to do in music, but still they establish the, the mood that I seem to remember from early days. And I'm trying my best to recapture it. I also have another reason for wanting to do a poem like this. I've been often tempted to do many dramatic poems with lots of events and, and great pronouncements, and, and I wanted to write something where nothing happens, if, if, if I can succeed. A very great singer who was doing a, an important New York recital had already chosen a big group of my music, but wanted something entertaining, something amusing. And I couldn't think of anything, and I looked about and couldn't find anything, and I said to Adolf one evening, uh, uh, I told him the story, and said, what, what can I do, what, I, what would you suggest? And he said, why don't you just look up something in the dictionary, look up love. And I thought, oh, this is a ridiculous idea, but still we did. We opened the Funk and Wagnalls desk dictionary and opened to love, and there was this dic definition, which I used word for word, chiefly because of the last line, which I knew was going to make a, a terrific ending for a song. Oh, yeah. 
Thelius uh, is very much interested in painting and always was. He doesn't paint himself. And we have common literary interests. We have uh, interest in, in languages. He, he's very fluent in German. Of course, German I've known all my life. I speak it as fluently as I do English. Uh, so there's, there are a lot of things that, that, uh, that we, uh, we're never at a loss for, for material. <laughs> We've been sympathetic been, since we were students. We've, we've been lucky. We've been lucky because we've, we've seen, we're interested in the same kinds of music, for, first of all. And we, we've we had the same kind of same kind uh, instruction. Of training and, same kind of training. And, uh, and we, we like we, one we feel another, alike. Too. We feel alike about, we admire the same music and the same composers and the same performers. We, we don't we? Well, I think we agree think very so. much about all the music we hear. Or people. And or people, people. Also. Mm -hmm.